Hello, this is Steve again at HVACPartShop.com. Today we're going to go over uh, installing an ignition control board uh, on a pulse furnace, a Linux pulse. Now, the old control was this control here. Um, the old control, uh, also known as a 73K8601 uh, or 60J00. This board here has been discontinued, no longer available. Um, so anyway, I'll kind of go over a few of the things on this old control. Um, up here we had a status light. Um, right over here is where our flame sensor hooked up. Um, right here you can see it had a little fold over tab for our ground. Um, here we had a six pin Molex. And then over here was our spark generator. Um, now on the spark generator you can see there was a needle right here. So I'll kind of go over that with you real quick and kind of just give you an idea. Um, this, basically a wire just kind of stuck in there like that. So what you've got to do is you've got to pull that wire out. Now when you pull it out, this is going to be a blank end like that. So we're going to have to strip this wire back and uh, I'll go over that here in just a second. But that's how it looks like that uh, when you get it. Of course your connectors and stuff will be on there but anyway let me set this one aside real quick and I'll go over this other uh, replacement control that uh, has been made, made to replace that. The replacement control is going to be this Y4749 that'd be the Linux part number or the Bezo number is going to be a BGN891. Um, we'll kind of go over what's inside the kit real quick. Let's go ahead and open it up. Of course, you're going to get your um, installation instructions. Kind of go over that. Uh, kind of gives you an idea of how to get it installed. There's really not much to it, but you get that. You do get the new control. This will be the new control. You can see it's quite a bit different as far as size-wise. Um, um, other than that. As far as connecting it wire for wire, it's going to be really simple, and I'll, we'll kind of go over that here in a second. So that's the new control. So I'll just come with this little bag of goodies here, and we'll kind of go over that each at, uh, one at a time here. Let me get them dumped out. Okay, it is going to come with this diode. Um, this diode is for uh, if you're if you have a thermostat that is uh, uh, that robs power. Uh, you'll want to use this diode. A lot of times that's going to be like on a mechanical thermostat that will rob power. Other than that, other than that we, we won't really need to use this if we don't have one of those types of thermostats. The instructions will go over that with you uh, if you'll need to use it or not. Um, it also comes with this little connector which we probably won't use if we're doing a pulse furnace because they don't have this type of connector on the pulse. So we'll set that aside. The one we will use is this connector. Okay, uh, this is just a regular spade connector. Um, now what we'll do is we'll have to do that because remember when I told you we pulled our spark lead out of the, the generator here, um, it just comes with a blank end on it. We'll need to put a spade connector on the end of that. So what we'll do is we'll strip this wire off uh, or strip the casing off this wire, pull it off, uh, push the wire through here, and then we'll crimp it down. Once that's crimped down on there, then uh, then we're good to go to connect it to the new board. Let's kind of go over real quick on how to uh, get the new board hooked up. So we'll set this down here. Okay, so here's the old board. I'll set it over here to the side like this. And here's the new board. Uh, you can see that we have our grounding lead here. Here's the grounding lead on the, on the new control. Um, so basically we can just take this, if we're going to wire this up, we can just take this over here to our screw hole, put our screw down through there, and uh, that will ground it to the casing of the furnace. Okay, so that takes care of this lead. Um, then we got our Molex connector here which is the same as this. So we'll just unplug our Molex from, from the old control. Go ahead and just plug it into the new control here. 
It's only going to go one direction. You can't turn it the wrong way, so it'll be plugged in the correct way. Um, so then that'll take care of this. We have right here, we've got a little wire sticking out here. That's going to be for our sense. It does say sense right here. This is for our flame sensor. And our flame sensor lead on the old control, remember, was right up here. Um, was right up here. So, um, make sure I'm right. Yeah, right here is where our flame sensor will So we'll just unplug that there. Um, Replug it onto the end of this bay connector here. That'll be for our flame sensor. And then for our uh, igniter, again, we're going to strip the ends of our of our ignition lead and we'll plug it we'll we'll tie it into this and then this will then plug into our spark which is right here okay it just slides on there like that um, so it'll your wire will be in there like that so and then that'll give us plenty of that'll, that'll give us our spark um, one thing that's going to be a little bit different I'll go ahead and unplug this here real quick one thing that's going to be a little bit different, as you can see, is the footprint uh, of the two boards when you go to install them. Um, so you will probably have to make another screw hole. You can use one of the screw holes that is already there. So, okay, so it's going to be important that you keep, keep a copy of your instructions because it's going to have your diagnostic codes on there for your diagnostic light to kind of give you an idea of what's going on with the control if you have issues. Um, such as uh, uh, flame sense current, uh, if you don't have any flame sense current, or if you don't, uh, um, if you have flame loss, it's going to it's going to spit out different codes for you. But all that'll be your codes will be on the uh, inst installation instructions. Um, now the diagnostic light on this control is going to be right up here in this corner, right here. Uh, it'll blink. It'll give you a certain amount of blinks for each each code. Um, I do have this this control uh, this control uh, on the website. Uh, you can just type in part search Y forty seven forty nine. There, it'll give you the price. And if you do end up losing the installation instructions, I do have a copy on the, our website under that part number. So that pretty much does it. Um, until then, um, I'll see you the next time.